Hi, Jan Ozer here from Mile High Video. I'm speaking now with JB from Videoland and Kyber, and he's one of the, uh, if you have VLC player on your computer, whether it's uh, Mac or Linux or, uh, or Windows, then this is the gentleman who's responsible for that, and I certainly use it on all my computers, and I'm, I'm guessing most people out there do as well. But he's here with another company showing some interesting 3D technology that we'll cover, uh, we'll cover in a moment. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. So, you know, what are you showing here at the show? Which companies are you here to represent and, and what are you showing? So, the, the, what we are showing here is a solution called Kyber, which is a real-time control of machines SDK, which is based on uh, real-time video encoding. Um, so here the goal is to show how low can we go uh, in terms of latency um, to enable a lot of, lot of scenarios which are mostly, mostly controlling of machines. Um, so here there is a demo about uh, gaming because cloud gaming is the most annoying and challenging uh, case, um, but it's useful for controlling of robots, drones, remote cars, um, to do cloud rendering and streaming that to devices. So it's really like an SDK to do uh, real-time control of machines and everything is based on an extremely fast uh, lowest latency possible video feed and a bidirectional input um, scenarios and, and, and type of server. Um, it's open source uh, like most of these things I've been doing. Um, it's based on FFmpeg and VLC. Uh, FFmpeg as a server which is has been completely uh, rewired to be in a push mode and VLC which has also been modified quite a bit to be not in low latency but like real time right so on on all Kyber the goal is to say to go as low as we can right like latency matters most and it's very different from everything that we're doing as an industry where we care about quality about being sure that audio and video synchronization are on or in the case of WebRTC or SRT that you need a constant latency here the goal is to go as low as we can and there is so many scenarios uh, cloud gaming is a demo we are showing but it's probably the most difficult but the less business interesting one how do you make money with open source? We've had this conversation as it related to um, VLC, but why why this um, focus on open source as, as opposed to commercial type products? Um, well, for for me, for like Kyber is a bit different than VLC or FFmpeg, right? Which I'm, as you said, I'm, I'm managing, and VLC and FFmpeg tech are using are being used everywhere, right? In you mentioned VLC, but like also the engine of VLC is using so many applications. Um, and in FFmpeg and VLC, the goal is mostly um, to get the technology everywhere and people use that. And, and the only business case there is around that is just support, right? And that's why I have a company is on VLC, one on FFmpeg, where I'm basically doing consulting, support, integration for large companies. Um, here on Kyber, it's a bit different because um, here I think that we are at the state of the art. It's not like VLC or FFmpeg, which are open source solutions, but like it's it's not complete innovation, right? Like they were players before VLC, they were encoders before FFmpeg, uh, and they are commercial options. Here on Kyber, what we show here is eight milliseconds glass to glass latency, and I don't know anything uh, open source or not open source that is able to do that on so many so many machines, so many codecs, so many um, use cases. Um, so here it's a bit different than FFmpeg or VLC. It has dual licensing, right? It's an AGPL license and a commercial license. So if either you're building an open source application or a type of uh, non-commercial use case and then you're going to use the open source version or you're a large company and you need to integrate that in your product and then you will have a classic commercial license. Um, but to answer exactly your question is today there is so much cost on, on, on software and it's mostly about support, about training, about everything around the license that basically you're not paying for license anymore and we've seen that everyone is moving to SaaS, right? You, you, you're paying more on the usage base. And if you're in this case, being open source or not doesn't change anything. And, and Kyber is mostly that type of, of, of scenarios. So looking at Kyber, give me an example of the type of company you're selling to and, and exactly what your product is doing within that, within that product's use case. Um, yeah, so um, there are four main use cases on Kyber. One is cloud gaming. There is a company called Plero, which is giving you a way to test any video game for 15 seconds. Uh, for, for 
for 15 seconds to a few minutes. Um, so it's inside the web browser, right? So instead of buying a video game, which is quite expensive, you click inside the web browser. Uh, and because Kyber works also in extremely low latency in the web browser, you can test it for a few minutes, and then you decide if you want to buy it or not, right? And it's almost instant. Um, there is uh, two companies. One is Pollen Robotics, the other is uh, another robotics company who are using that to control robots, right? Because of course, we are going to see a lot of automatic, autonomous drones and robots and remote cars, but sometimes, right, they get stuck. And, and even on Waymo, right, you need to control that. And for that, you need to have an extremely fast control because you're controlling machines, right? So we have um, the robotic use cases, also three or four companies. Uh, some are small. Uh, one is a um, well, prototyping is a large uh, car manufacturer. Um, and so that's mostly the robots. So, so exp explain that to me. Where are you sitting? Are you sitting between the controller and the robot or? Um, yes, exactly. Right. So Kyber is a is at the same time the server side, the client side, and the networking protocol, right? Um, and so it is able to take any type of video feeds, uh, whether it's grabbing a desktop like cloud gaming, whether it's grabbing an HDMI, which would be, be like a, um, like industrial robots. Um, grabbing a frame buffer like you would do in uh, 3D uh, uh, rendering or, or gaming or uh, basically grabbing a camera for the drones, right? And then compresses that as fast as possible with the hardware that you have or the software that you have and send that over and on the other side decode and display but also have bidirectional input so that you can send gamepads, mouse, keyboards, um, copy paste, file transfer, USB over IP, can canvas, right? It really like control of machines. Video is one part of it, but it's not even the biggest part of that. Um, and so then you are in cases for drones, right? It's like mostly an embedded Linux where you're going to have a camera that you get in and then everything else to control, for example, the rotation or uh, every control of the robot is mostly USB. Okay. So a subject near and dear to my heart and your heart is uh, VVC. Um, we spoke, I guess, about a year ago and, and you said VVC was dead. Um, yes. I, w I was kind of surprised. The latest version of FFmpeg had VVC decode in it. Yes. And and what is your so you know all jokes aside, what do you what are you seeing from the industry about VVC adoption within the companies that you're working with now? Um, I mean, like, it's the same, right? Like, um, unfortunately, I think that the VVC uh, scenarios are too small and, and not interesting enough to be a massive thing um, and um, the patents situation is even worse than the HVC one right so for me it's not compelling enough to have mass adoption uh, but at the same time as you know right I'm uh, I'm actually the one who has been like sponsoring the VVC decoder inside uh, FFmpeg right because the goal of FFmpeg and VLC is to support everything right and that doesn't mean that um, I believe uh, a codec is good or not, right? That's not my problem, right? As a technical person, like, and as head of VLC and active member of FAMPEG, we support everything. And VVC is a new thing, we need to support it, right? And like, we support things like VP6, VP7, VP8, like even VP9, and those codecs are way less useful. But I, I still think that um, I see really a dual track, H264 AV1, on a lot of cases and uh, I feel that VP8, VP9 are going to go away slowly uh, for AV1 and um, that HEVC will stay around for, for broadcasting but anything outside is just going to be H264, AV1 and, and not very optimistic for the mass adoption of VVC or, or newer codecs. Okay, is, is VVC playback available in VLC? Yes, of course. Okay, I didn't know that. That's something I'll try. Um, you're here at um, at Mile High. What year is this for you? Uh, I think I've been to Mile High four times. Um, last year I was already presenting stuff on Kyber. Um, the demo was a bit less good, right? Uh, we were showing this around 16 milliseconds glass to glass latency. Here we're showing eight. Um, I also have like uh, the Apple Vision where we can also play directly that in the Apple Vision. Um, and I brought also um, a demo of VLC AI subtitle um, that we showed at CS where we are showing uh, direct um, automatic subtitling that we know, right, that many people have done, wow. 
but automatic translation of that, of all those subtitles to 120 languages. But all that is done on the device. And that's quite important because there is so many use cases on AI and everything is like done on, on the cloud uh, deep, and you need a service and the service might go down. And here we are doing that and we show that at CES where you're doing that um, on the machine and it works on a normal Mac or a normal uh, phone. Um, and of course, you're American, I'm French, we don't care that much because everything is subtitled, everything is because of uh, ob obligations and so on. But like when we see the number of people, uh, uh, Eastern Europe, uh, Africa, um, also e Asia, like when we show you can translate anything um, that you can play with VLC, it could be like live TVs, it works for, and so on. So I have this demo also, and I've done also the, uh, I've brought also the IMF demo. Um, we, we have a version of VLC where you can play the new IMF format uh, for audio. So um, my biggest focus, of course, is Kyber, the, the Kyber demo, but we have also cool VLC demos that we showed at CS and at them in the last few months. And, and yeah, and, and for me, I really like uh, Mile High um, because it's one of the most technical conference on video ever, right? It's, and very few people uh, but such high quality, right? Compared to IBC or NAB, which are massive and so many things are mostly commercial, right? And, and, and marketing. And here it's just about like true tech. Okay, listen, thanks for your time and um, have a great show. Thank you very much.